And one guy said, you know, I never thought about it before, but last Friday I hired a banana to do the job. Are your users not using your product? If so, ask yourself this question. What job is my product being hired for? What's up guys and welcome to another video. In today's video, I'll be talking about the jobs to be done framework and how you can apply it to product development. So recently I started reading Starting Up by the company Intercom, which is a book that they self-published on how to build a startup. So that book makes frequent mention of the jobs to be done framework. And it got me thinking about how I might be able to apply it to my own startup. So far, I have been applying it to my own startup, thinking about what my product actually does for my customers. And it's given me pretty good results. In the last week, I was able to recruit over five users, which is a solid number in my opinion. So how can you apply jobs to be done to your own startup development process? Well, first, you have to understand what jobs to be done means. So what is jobs to be done? Jobs to be done is a way to think about why people buy products. So people buy products because of benefits, right? But that isn't the full picture because when it comes to buying a product, there are usually many different variations of that same product. Think about computers, for instance. There are just so many different brands out there, so many different models and benefits all of them offer. To get to a more granular understanding of why people buy products, you have to use the jobs to be done framework which talks about how a product is purchased because a consumer has hired it to get a job done. For example, you hire a MacBook Pro 16 inch to get Final Cut Pro footage edited because the job you want it to do is to give you a seamless video editing experience without any lag and at very fast speeds. That's the job that you hired that 16 inch MacBook Pro to do. Now another example is the McDonald's milkshake, which is what Clayton Christensen talks about in the milkshake video, which I will provide a link to in the description below. So in that video, Christensen talks about how McDonald's was able to better understand the milkshake market and ultimately come to the conclusion that the market was actually seven times bigger than what they thought it was. And that was using the jobs to be done framework. And what they did was they had someone stand in McDonald's for 18 hours interviewing customers. And what they found in that was that there would always be customers showing up at 6.30 in the morning buying a milkshake. Now seeing this behavior done consistently over time, they wanted to further understand why people would show up and buy a milkshake at 6.30 a.m. in the morning every single day. What was the motive behind this behavior? So what they did was they literally confronted these people at 6.30 in the morning and asked them, what job does your milkshake do for you? What job did you hire this milkshake for? So obviously that terminology confused quite a few customers, but they eventually were able to answer by saying that they didn't always buy milkshakes. Some customers said that they tried eating donuts instead. Some customers said they tried eating a Snickers bar. Some customers said that they ate bananas instead at 6.30 in the morning instead of getting a milkshake. But that all of them just felt like bananas, Snickers, they just didn't get the job done. And the job that they were actually trying to get done, the state of being that they were trying to avoid was just feeling hungry at 10 a.m. So that was the job of the milkshake. It was to make sure that these people wouldn't feel hungry during their morning commute and probably wouldn't feel hungry from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m., which is typically when people have lunch. And from that experience, from that customer research experience, McDonald's was able to find out that the market wasn't just limited to people consuming milkshakes, not just McDonald's milkshakes, but milkshakes from Burger King, milkshakes from Wendy's. The market was really people who wanted to feel full from 6.30 a.m. to 12 p.m. That was the market, and that there were many different customers out there who weren't drinking milkshakes, but were trying to stave off hunger by eating bananas at 6.30 a.m., by eating Snickers throughout this period, by drinking water, by doing all sorts of things to try to stave off hunger from 6.30 a.m. to 12 p.m. And that was what was found using the Jobs to be Done framework. People were hiring milkshakes to stave off hunger. 
they weren't hiring milkshakes simply because milkshakes tasted good. I'm sure that played a role, but that wasn't the full picture. So how can you apply the jobs to be done framework to your own product? So first think about what your product does for your customer. What function does it perform and what benefits does it offer by performing these functions? From there, you can start asking people who do use your product about what exactly they decided to choose your product for. What was the reasoning for choosing your product? Usually they'll talk about what your product does for them, but they'll, they'll, they'll make, definitely make mention of what outcome they are trying to pursue with your product. And if they don't, try to ask them, what outcome do you think my product will lead you to? And that is really what in customer success is called the customer success goal. You wanna get them from point A, which is where they are now, to point B, which is when the benefits of your product have been fully realized. Because when you get them to that point, they become a satisfied customer. So with the milkshake, it's staving off hunger. Point A is you're hungry and it's 6.30 a.m. in the morning. And point B is it's 10 a.m. and you're still full. That's success. That's customer success. So you wanna understand what your customer success goal is for your product by asking the people who are using your product, what outcome are you trying to pursue with the product? From that point onwards, you can then think about what features to offer to deliver benefits that get your customers closer to that customer success goal. So for me personally, I'm trying to make it easier for people to find jobs and internships. So obviously the customer success goal is being able to find a job or an internship. And I believe that networking is probably the best way to get my customers closer to that goal. And as a result, I focus therefore on what my product can do to increase the chances that my customers will get to that customer success goal of finding a job and or finding an internship. So that's it guys for today's video. Just to recap, in today's video, we talked about what the jobs to be done framework is, and then we gave a few examples of the jobs to be done framework before ending with how you can apply it to your own startup. Be sure to check out the milkshake video by Clayton Christensen. It's a great explanation of the jobs to be done framework. And if you like this video, smash the like button, hit subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.